we were the missing kids on a field trip. <laughs> This was in first grade. I don't know why it's such a vivid memory to me. We were going on a field trip to the Toledo Zoo. I went to St. Al's in Bowling Green. It's a private school. And for little private schools, especially back in like the early 2000s, the parents were the chaperones. There was no bus. You had like five or six parents that grouped the kids up, took them up in cars. You got there. The teacher like rounded everyone up and you went on your field trip. Growing up, for some reason, I lived at the Toledo Zoo. My parents did their own trips there. We went there with family friends. We went there with... <laughs> We went there with family members, we went there for the lights. I, the, I knew the Toledo Zoo like the back of my hand, okay? But for this field trip, our first grade teacher sends like this legit itinerary. Like you had to go to only certain exhibits. You had to check in with her at these specific exhibits every couple hours. And it's like, what the heck's the point of going to the zoo? Even as a first grader, I'm sitting there like, what is the point of this? Like, why can't we just go explore the zoo and meet you at the end? at the time that we need to beat you. <laughs> like, what? what is this? And there was all kinds of weird stipulations like, don't buy, don't buy outside food from the zoo to make other kids jealous, eat your packed lunch. Like, is this even a field trip or is this a, a tour through Auschwitz? Like, come on. Terrible joke, I'm gonna take that out. Luckily, my dad's taken us on this field trip. Now, my dad was the parent that worked full time while my mom was at home. So when my dad says he's taking a day off work and he's taking me up there, I'm, I'm hyped, right? I'm like, let's go, best field trip ever. <laughs> So my dad takes me and my buddy, Adam. Shout out my boy, Adam Canterbury. We have been friends since kindergarten. I moved away, and we are still friends to this day. That guy is my boy. Adam, if you watch this, I freaking love you, man. And all the people from St. Al. Austin, Nathan, all the other names that I don't talk to anymore. What a freaking group of dogs we were at St. Al's back in the day. Let me just say that right now. <laughs> you got to understand the early 2000s nostalgia of this. My dad's a chaperone. He picks us up from school. <laughs> Me and my best friend, Adam. But once we got to the zoo, my dad basically looks at the itinerary and goes, eh, nah. And just takes me and Adam eating pizza, getting the souvenir cups full of pop. We're getting that like crazy sugar rush as a kid going absolutely wild, just going through the zoo. And my dad's basically just taking us to all the stuff that he wants to see at the zoo. So it was great. It was a great time. We're, we're rolling, baby. <laughs> we end up having a time of our lives at the Toledo Zoo, right? Even though I've been there a million times. And my dad starts getting a phone call from an unknown number. So the first couple of times, he just clicks past it. The third time he answers realizes it's my first grade teacher <laughs> calling hey paul you guys haven't been to any of the checkpoints we're just checking in to see where you guys are at <laughs> my dad's like oh yeah sorry so it's really like almost the end of our field trip a day at the zoo right we get back it talk about like the ultimate flex as a little kid we have our two su huge souvenir cups of pop and we're just like what's up peasants like <laughs> All of our classmates see us. We're like, yeah, that's right. We broke every rule today and didn't follow the itinerary. We're like, damn, what's up with that? <laughs> and my dad just rolls with it, right? He's like, oh, yeah, you know, sorry. Uh, I kind of forgot about the itinerary. And blah, blah, blah. Obviously, the teacher, was like, what are they going to say? Like, field trip's already over. So it was just a hilarious experience. I got to say, I hope that for all the schools out there, that parents, chaperones are still a thing. Because to this day, obviously, I remember that for a reason. And it's regardless of what you think of yourself as a, as a parent. And I'm not one. I hope to be one someday. But, you know, it's God's plan. We'll see how it goes. But you are your kid's superhero. Regardless of how you feel about yourself, just remember that there is a little kid at home, if you have one, that if you have kids, just remember that kid freaking idolizes you and looks at you like you are the world. I think that's just such an important thing for parents to remember. It's like today, I am not judging by any means, but and maybe it's just my perception of the world, but I look around and I see so many people that are younger parents that just sit on their phones and they put a device in front of their kids. And I'm like, damn, dude, like, if I had a kid right now, I probably wouldn't even be doing Talks with Tom anymore. I mean, if I had a kid, that kid would be my freaking universe. And I would give that kid every second of the attention that they needed. And I'd do anything for them because that's my kid. That's something that I literally created here on this earth. I would give that kid every second of my day. That kid would be my highest priority at all time. I know that everybody's trying to do their thing and hustle and work and all that stuff. But it's like, geez. If you have a kid, you should treat that kid like they're the world. Maybe I'm maybe I'm totally wrong on that. It's just a, a kind of an observation I've made over the last couple of months being out in public and seeing things, trying to be more aware of my surroundings at times now. And I just I think that's really freaking sad, man. Like as a little kid, I just never got stuck in front of a phone. Like just quit annoying me and 
play your games. It just seems so messed up. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but for me, my kid's getting getting 110% of my attention when I'm with them. And, and I'm, I'm far from perfect, so maybe I'm going to end up screwing my kid up. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give my kid 110% of my effort as a parent. So, And as always, shout out my boy Siege. I need to do more like intentional shout outs like this. I, I think it's hard to like make it as a movie script writer and then I see how difficult it is to get things going as an up and coming artist. So go check out my boy CJ Smith. He's Siege on all platforms. Maybe Mr. Siege on Instagram. I take that back. He's just Siege on all music platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, YouTube. He's on everything. Whatever music platform you're on, just look up Siege. He's on there, I swear. And he has some absolute bangers. I think Shake Shake and Bake is not only my intro and outro song, it's like one of my favorite songs. I listen to it all the time. So <laughs> so go support my boy. He really does have some fire songs. And and CJ, I know we haven't talked in a while, brother, but super thankful for you. Super thankful for all my friends and family out there who are supporting this. And uh, that's today's episode. Talks with Tom. Taking shots by the lake till I can't even breathe no more. See no more. I was riding around town thinking to myself, is it going to get easier? I'll be up in a way of the shake and bake, but I can't even breathe no more. What's it to me? What can I see? Taking shots by the lake. Mic check, mic check, and and we're good. <clears throat>